as I said, I get emails every day from people in India. I get emails from people from Pakistan. I get emails from people from Bangladesh. I get emails from people from Philippines. I get emails from people from Sri Lanka. That's right. I get emails from Sri Lanka. Um, and these countries are cheaper. Bangladesh is cheaper than India. Pakistan is cheaper than India. Sri Lanka is cheaper than India. Okay. Um, so if you're going to compete on price, you'll never win. All of them, all the people speak English. But that doesn't matter. That's not communication. Okay. That's not the same as speaking. Communication is about how you empathize, how you build relationships, how you um, <clears throat> present yourself, um, how you help them with their problems. That's what people want. Okay. They're not looking for English speaking people. They're looking for smart, articulate, friendly, helpful, trustworthy people that can get the job done. <clears throat> That's what they want. So, Get it out of your head straight away trying to be the cheapest, okay? Because um, you'll never win that, and it's a recipe for disaster. Um, Bangladesh is cheapest, and look at the state of Bangladesh's economy. Pakistan is cheaper, probably, and look at the state of Pakistan's economy. Not great, okay? So don't even think about that, all right? So get that out of your head. Focus on adding value, okay? How can you add value to potential clients how can you add value to prospects how can you help these companies you have to seek out a competitive advantage now it's possible to compete on cost low cost and be differentiated at the same time but companies that try to be all things to all customers can wind up getting stuck in the middle and as michael porter calls this he causes that causes that calls that the kiss of death now, he's a renowned kind of Harvard um, business school expert, the kiss of death. So you try to, if you try to be everything, if you try to lower cost and differentiate, so you're just trying to do everything and it's just going to be an absolute bloody disaster. OK, so don't try and do everything. Don't try and be or don't try and be everything to everyone. So but if you tr you can do a few things you can do, you can differentiate yourself. You could put um, drive up prices is one way to increase profitability to command a premium price you customer you have to deliver distinct value to your customers this is differentiation now remember the word distinctive value and differentiation that those are so important how do you differ what how, what's going to make you different to the other players in the market the other way is cost leadership driving down costs is another way to increase profitability to compete to cost companies must balance price with acceptable quality this is this is cost leadership now you could do either way OK, um, if you go down the differentiation route, you might think, hey, how do I differ to my competitors? Now, we've got many people on this call today. There are many, many offshoring companies in India, as we said, many, many people are in Mexico, Sri Lanka, Philippines. Whatever. We're all kind of in the same market. And at the moment, as I said, when I get those emails, spam emails every week, every day, they're all just looking at cost. <clears throat> they're not differentiating themselves in any other way. So it's so important that you think, how can I differentiate some? What will I be different? How will I differ? What will I be doing differently um, <clears throat> after this? And therefore, at the same time, if you try and go with cost leadership, and this is what kind of my outsourcing partner I used originally was, this is where they went. They would try to compete on cost and they tried to be really cheap. And they were, but that affected their quality. And the equality was not acceptable. And ultimately, they lost the business to, to, from me. So yeah, they didn't get that balance right. Now, if you, can, if you can do it at a lower cost and the quality is still good, then you know what? Then you're going to do really well. Okay, It's when you bring the cost down and the quality comes down at the same time, that's when an issue arises. So especially in professional services, you want to get the quality right. Okay. Um, now, if you don't get the quality right, you'll have no business, okay? Um, now, hands up, I've made mistakes, many, many mistakes, okay, um, in running my accounting firm and where I tried to keep the costs lower and the quality was low and that had a knock-on effect on my business. Then, And what I've realized is that the only way to really grow a professional services firm is to actually differentiate yourself, be different, okay? Because if you differentiate yourself, you'll be able to attract customers who will pay a higher price, you'll attract better talent, okay? If you attract better talent, they'll do a better, 
better job. Um, and therefore, you can then charge a premium price associated with it. So the message I'm trying to say here is focus on value or not price. What value are you going to give to your customer? What value are you going to do that? What, are you gonna, what value are you going to provide to your team? You might have heard this all before, but I'm going to say this. And you have to build a world-class team and focus on the culture you're trying to create. Now, these are the points I want to get across, and I'm going to talk about my own scenario in, in a short while. But it's so important, important to um, get experienced hires into the role. You need to train your team in the right roles, have excellent communication skills. They need to have a positive driven attitude, offer flexible work culture, pay people above the market rates, develop the teams so they're the foundation of future growth. Um, they join the business because it's not about the money. They feel it's actually about something more important. And you have to make your team feel part of something much bigger. Now, <clears throat> there's a whole variety of things. There's so many aspects to this whole um, of, of growing your own firm. And I remember, I remember when I when I started off my firm, I came, as I said, I came from a kind of a banking, accounting background, big corporate culture. And my focus when I started out was all about, oh, it's got to be profitable, profits. Um, so try and get things done as cheaply as possible and try and grow the revenue. And that was a, that was a corporate culture um, that was instilled in me from places like PwC and the banking sector and, and everything. <laughs> And that was about 20 odd years ago. What I've learned in those 20 years or so, or so is that that is absolutely wrong. <laughs> okay. Um, there's only one thing for me as a business owner to do, and that is to focus on my team, develop the team, make them a better team, grow the team, pay the team, make them do better. Okay. Um, enhance the team, encourage the team. Um, if I don't do that, I've got no business, okay, and the profits won't grow. If I just focus on building the best bloody team out there, um, it's 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 so important. Then you get that team culture right because if you have the team, they'll take away a lot of your headaches. So do away with the idea that focus on profitability, focus on leadership, and focus on team. Because if you get that right the profits will come, okay?